Hi everybody, Crispy Zach here. Welcome to my Thursday night live stream where I am tackling business writing, fiction editing, grammar and punctuation, one video at a time. Welcome and I hope everyone has been having some fabulous, fabulous writing. And if you have, wonderful. If not, that's what we're here for. Okay, today's topic is using your words, not your font, for emphasis. This is something that no matter what people write, whether they're working on the next great American novel, whether they're working on poetry, whether they're working on an email or a text message or whatever it may be, sometimes we just kind of want to throw up jazz hands. I'm really excited. Jazz hands, exclamation points, quotation marks, bold, caps, italics, whatever it may be. Sometimes our excitement rubs the wrong way. And all of that energy we are trying to put into something, all the importance we're trying to put in something is lost because we're throwing up all these jazz hands right and left with our fonts. So tonight's topic is really diving into these little subtle details to make sure that all of your writing, no matter what it is that you're working on, has the total effect that you are going for. Okay, the first thing I want to start with today is when something is a really big deal. Do you think you should ever, ever, ever use all caps? Please don't. Please don't. If you don't realize that all caps often rubs off as yelling, screaming, that's not how you want to send your business correspondence. That is not how you want your character to show their true love for somebody else. Please avoid all caps at all cost. Now, the other side of this is when you want to use bold or italics or underline. My biggest thought is you want to stress things sometimes, right? But you don't want to be the boy who, boy who called wolf, where you're suddenly saying, this is really important. Oh, but this over here, this is also really important. This is important over here. When you're using bold, italics, underline, you want to do so sparingly. Maybe this is where you want to use a very powerful header, subject matter to an email, header to a blog, some sort of chapter name, something like that. This is where these bold italics underlining are great things. However, if you are suddenly just dropping them all over place in a business email to your boss, to your employees, where are they supposed to look with all of these very important things that are bolded and italicized and underlined everywhere? Where are they supposed to focus? This is where you need to start using your words. This is where perhaps in an email you could prioritize things. Do not stress point one and point two in caps in an email. Perhaps you could use a bullet point list instead where you're not yelling at people and throwing all sorts of things with your font. You're just organizing things slightly more clearly. This is always our goal with writing, isn't it? Be as clear and precise as possible. It's not the font's job. It's yours as the writer, okay? And sometimes we want to take that pressure off of ourselves and we just want to throw font and jazz hands. But you are the writer. It is your job to edit yourself, figure out what's important, and make sure you're saying it clearly. Don't use these special font tricks to do so. When it comes to a fiction manuscript, a nonfiction manuscript, some sort of creative project that you're working on, I see it in all the time as an editor. I was so angry. And all of a sudden you see this one word in a sentence that's stressed so that maybe you could see how a character or a narrator would specifically accent that sentence. What word would they emphasize? Well, that is fine. You could hear that maybe, but maybe as I'm a reader, maybe I would read that exact same sentence and I would throw the emphasis in a different place. That doesn't mean the writer or the reader is wrong or right. That just means people read things differently. That emphasis with italics is sometimes distracting. And again, this is where it is your job not to say, I am angry, but to do that classic show versus tell. How can you show the reader that emotion? How can you show how important that one little word is through that body language or di dialogue or whatever it is that you're doing? Try to figure out how to take out that bold, that anger through the caps, through the underlining, through everything else that you do, and use only your words to show that emotion, to show the importance, to show whatever energy is happening with that language through font alone. That is my challenge for you. Another thing that I'm seeing people trying to, okay, I'm gonna take out that italics and the bold and all of that, and I have a trick. 
and this is how I'm going to show someone how it's really important. It was the butler, the butler, and all of a sudden you have this repetition in lieu of your fancy fonts. Please don't just repeat yourself. Repeating yourself, I find often in first drafts of novels when people have not had that much experience, we have so often important point, secondary character. Really? Is that true? Important point? And you see this thing repeated again and again. Watch out for repeating yourself. It is, in fact, one way to get around the bold, the italics, the 10 exclamation points. Oh, please don't ever do that. But please don't just repeat yourself to save yourself from the font. Here again, it's your challenge as a writer. How do you make yourself heard and understood without your font doing, the, doing all the dancing for you? Okay, so in fiction, in business writing, in whatever it is that you're working on, be careful with these underlying italics caps. But one thing that often comes up is a change in color. This is often not in fiction, not in books, but you see maybe on signage, you see a sign today. In fact, I stumbled across a sign that read like this. Please bring alcoholic beverages beyond this point. And it stopped me and I thought there is something wrong with this sign or else there is a party beyond that gate that maybe I want to go to. And then I stepped a couple steps closer and I realized that there were two words missing here and it was please do not except for the do not was barely visible. The do not was in red and it was out in the sun. And that sign maybe had been there for a couple years and all of a sudden that sign that had once in red said, please do not bring alcoholic beverages beyond that point. Suddenly that sign was inviting me to a party. Now, okay, I was a good girl today. I didn't check out what party was happening behind that gate or if anybody else was reading the sign the way I was reading that sign, but be careful with red and not just because it sometimes fades in the sun. If you are using red in an email, somewhere in the back of our sixth grade minds, we see red font in an email that a teacher is yelling at us and we are uncomfortable. Okay, this is where the bosses in the world say, okay, get over yourself, it's red. And here's where I throw back to those bosses or whoever it is writing that red email, how else can you do this besides using a red color yelling at people? Occasionally, to emphasize that deadline, that specific project goal, something like this, that one instance of bold or italics, whatever it is, is absolutely fine. But throwing things up in red over and over again makes people kind of angry somewhere in the back where they're not willing to admit their little sixth grade sensitive soul is lingering again. People are saying, get over it. I promise you, you will have better responses if you take your red out of your email communications. Also, with your signage, be careful what you're doing if you're out in the sun because who knows what's gonna happen if you're suddenly going to be inviting people to that party on your premises of please bring those alcoholic beverages. Do not. It faded in the sun, really. I think, I think there was a party happening back there. Okay, and if you're taking that red out, another reason I have to point out is some people are colorblind. It's something we don't always think about, but if you're emphasizing things in red via email communications, realize there is a good percentage of the population who is red, green, colorblind. So if you're emphasizing something in red, that's gonna go straight past a good part of your population. So do not emphasize in red in your emails, please. And if again, you wanna work on just focusing the clarity, not the fonts of your emails. Couple quick tips for you. When you are trying to get that angry point across, that very stern, quick, clear point across, just think about your verbiage on that, folks. Instead of saying you, er, some something that you need to focus on, why don't you just turn that sentence around, just make it a little bit easier to read, to talk about we or I. So rather than you have an issue here, we have a misunderstanding, something like this. So rather than focusing on the you, turn it around to a why. Again, this is where font does not have to be a part of it. Rather than telling somebody we have a problem via email or some other communication, text message, don't do it. Why don't you think about we have a concern we need to address, an issue, a matter. Itty bitty little words make a big difference. Now what's the difference if you had an email that said, we have a problem, problem all caps, underline bolded. Would you like that email? I would be kind of scared about that email. But if I had that other email saying, we have a concern about that writing tip. Okay, I'll, I'll hear out that concern about the writing tip. Again, simple little words to use instead of your fonts. Instead of saying, let's talk about that argument. Let's talk about that misunderstanding. It's a simple little word choice. Again, rather than talking about something that was bad, 
angry word, red font, underline caps, it's all the same thing. Simplify it, make it light, a little bit nicer, a little bit more um, res respective for people. Talk about how it was unfortunate or disappointing. Okay, and of course, last folks, if something is important, please do not put it in quotation marks. Suddenly, something is important. Is it? Is it really important? I'm not sure it is. So think about that. Don't do those quotation marks because really, I'm not sure what to believe when I see quotation marks anymore. And of course, studies suggest better writing is on the way. If this is your thesis statement, please don't put an emoticon in it. If you're emailing your boss, please don't put an emoticon in it. All right, think hard about those emoticon, emoticons, people. I know them, I love them. We use them all the time, but use them well. Don't throw them unless you are writing some brilliant YA mashup where you're using emoticons and all sorts of text speak. Be careful, don't throw that in. Okay, that's it for tonight, folks. Again, this has been using your words, not your font for emphasis every single Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be here, I'm Chris Spizak, and we will be talking about business writing, fiction editing, punctuation, grammar. And if you wanna hear tips like these any other time, feel free to follow me on social media or check out my website at chrisspizak.com. I have a fun quarterly newsletter that can go straight to your email box that has tips like these. So feel free to sign up for that, check out my website, follow me on social media, otherwise, Tune in next week for more writing tips like these. Have a great night, everyone. Happy writing.